Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a stereo install on this GMC Sierra. In this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio and head over to the bench to wire up a new radio, dash kit, and get a Bluetooth aftermarket doubled in radio installed in its place. Let's get started. Now the first thing that we need to do is get this guy on out. Um, the, usually the easiest way is to first pull off the bezel up and around the radio that goes over the steering column over to the left hand side. Um, you can usually use your hands or you can use the panel tool if preferred. Usually I like to get here on the corner and just go ahead and give it a pull. Now what you'll need to do is pull the gear shifter down to allow for a little bit of space. Put the key in. Go ahead, pull it all the way down. You don't need to start it. Pull down the steering wheel. Just keep popping it off with your hands. Just keep, kind of work it loose here. That's it, just like so. Go ahead, pull this back up. Put it back in the park. Now at this point, you're gonna have a screw on the right-hand side and two screws on the left-hand side. We have a 932nd here that fits that, um, and we're going to remove those three screws. Okay, so with those three screws removed, go ahead and pull on the radio. And on the back here, you're going to have a couple of harnesses to disconnect. Okay, with the stereo removed and out of the way, now we have space to work here. Let's head over to the bench and begin prepping the new radio and wiring harness. This video is sponsored by Crux Interfacing Solutions, an excellent location for radio replacements, camera interfaces, and more. Check out cruxinterfacing.com to start planning your next install today. All right, so here at the bench are the parts you're gonna need for the install. We have our chosen radio. We're going to the Pioneer MVH210EX. This is a Meckless radio it has no CD drive, it's strictly digital, uh, multimedia player. Um, in addition to the radio, to accommodate it in the dash, we have a dash kit. Now for this specific year, it's calling for the Metra 95-2001. We'll need an antenna adapter, um, and this is the Metra 40-GM10. And for our wiring harness adapter, which we will need to retain any sort of steering wheel control, OnStar, or Bose. Uh, we're going with this Crux adapter. This is the SWRGM-48. Um, this allows us to retain all that in addition to the um, accessory behind the radio because it's on a digital input. Um, it does that all for us, all in one unique kit, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want more information on this wiring harness, we'll have a separate video on the unboxing and teardown of this harness with all that information. Then finally here, just because most of these radios now have the USB and aux on the rear, to make it more easily accessible, we're gonna do a flush mount adapter, and we're gonna mount this in a, an accessible location just so you can access the USB and aux of the radio um, at uh, a better convenience. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and grab the wiring harness from our Pioneer, and we're gonna get the wiring harness from the Crux and begin soldering those together, because this Crux adapter will allow us to plug directly into the factory harness behind the factory radio. Let's get started. Okay, so what we've done here is we prepared our Crux wiring harness that came in the box and grabbed our Pioneer wiring harness now before we start soldering everything up, we actually went ahead and put heat shrink on our connections. So after we solder it, we can move it up and over the connection and um, protect that connection with some heat shrink. Now what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna go ahead and match these color for color straight across here. There's a couple of connections that aren't perfect and we'll make sure we indicate those. But again, we're just gonna match everything up color for color and get that soldered up. Now you can make these connections outside of soldering. If you want to use a butt connector or a crimp cap, that's fine too. But we like to solder here just to ensure that we have a good quality connection. So what we're going to do with a nice hot soldering iron is we're going to go ahead and put it right behind there and melt the solder right into our connection there. And we're going to go ahead and do this with all our other wires as well. So we'll do that and jump right back. 
Okay, so we went ahead and soldered all our connections color for color. The only one that didn't match on this crux harness that corresponded with our Pioneer is um, the reverse trigger wire, where on the Pioneer it is purple white, but on the crux it is a red white wire. So kind of keep that in mind. Other than that, just matching color for color, and we're going to go ahead and now take our heat shrink, pull it up and over our connections here, and then shrink them down with the heat gun. Okay, so what we've done is we let our harness cool, everything has been heat shrinked and tidied up. Now at this point we're going to go ahead and wrap our harness in Tessa tape just to protect the wire a little bit better as it sits back in the dash and it also leaves a nice clean professional look. Okay, so at this point we finished our wiring harness. This end plugs into the end in the truck, this end plugs into our Pioneer. This end plugs into the steering wheel control input on the back of the radio, the WR input on the back of the Pioneer. Now we also kept some pigtails off just in case we add any accessories down the road. We just paralleled in a red accessory, just an extra one just in case, a ground as well as a remote turn on wire, the blue white that we ran in parallel with the rest of the wire um, in case we add an amplifier down the road and need that trigger. So everything's all prettied up here. We can take this to the car and get this plugged in. But for now, we're going to set it off to the side and get our dash kit now mounted on our radio. Okay, so we went ahead and got our dash kit on the new radio. Pretty easy. The sides just snap into the main faceplate there. And then you use the supplied screws with the Pioneer to go ahead and screw it into the kit itself on both sides. Pretty self-explanatory there, left and right. You do have spacers if you need it, depending on um, your dash bezel. So if it needs to come out a little bit, make sure you use those spacers. Our wiring harness is good to go. We have our antenna um, adapter here. Now finally here, the aux and USB um, relocation kit we showed you earlier. So we pop this piece out. It usually has the passenger airbag turn off switch here. Well, we pop this whole piece out, just held on with four clips in the dash. And we pop this one out. What we did is we cut a one inch hole in here and put our aux and USB mount there. And then we just glued it all in there. You can use CA glue, you used hot glue, just so it's nice and secure that's drying at the moment. But basically this will plug into the aux and USB on the back of the radio, making these inputs a lot more convenient to get to. So you don't have like a, a USB in the glove box or hanging out underneath the dash. So pretty cool, we went ahead and did that there. Now at this point, we're basically done here at the bench. Let's head back over to the truck and start getting everything installed. All right, so we're back here in the dash and we started off by connecting our wiring harness adapter to the main harness. We got our antenna plug plugged in as well. We ran our aux and USB, plug, mounted that right back in there. So that's good to go and that comes out here. Then we have a Bluetooth mic that we chose to run as well. So let's go ahead and make our connections. Okay, before we put the final screw in, let's go ahead and do a test here to make sure everything's working. Okay, everything's working great. Steering wheel controls seem to be operating properly, which is awesome. So at this point, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and make sure everything else works. Um, and then what we'll do is we're gonna get our dash bezel just clipped back in. So we are good to go. We went ahead and put the panel back on. Everything clears, it looks great. If you have any questions about what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching the channel. Appreciate the support and we will see you in the next video.